September 1993, four scientists in a jeep traveling through the high mountains of central China. A man, but it had long red hair. An ape, but it walked on two legs. China extends for 3.7 million square miles. It's in Hubei, a remote province that the sightings are reported. Stories of the Huron, the wild man. The mountains in Hubei rise to almost 10,000 feet. The range is called Shunung Cha. It's steep and inhospitable. Though China has a population over a billion, very few live here. And until recent years, the region was closed to foreigners. One of the first Western scientists to visit was anthropologist Frank Poirier. It was almost by accident that Dr. Poirier discovered the story of a strange, large primate unknown to science. Initially, he was skeptical. I first went to China in the late 1970s to study golden monkeys. Uh, right before I was about to leave China, I was being debriefed. Someone actually leaned over and whispered in my ear, mentioned Ye Ren, and I had no idea what this was. I had never heard the word before. This particular individual gave me a hair. It was a reddish-orange hair, said it was the hair of Ye Ren. I thought the whole thing was so ridiculous that as soon as he left and I was out of sight, I threw the hair away. It was a decision he would come to regret for the American anthropologist soon became fascinated by the tales of a humanoid ape in the Chinese mountains. And by the scientific evidence which the Chinese authorities were beginning to gather. A Chinese newsreel of 1978 captures the moment that an expedition came upon this discovery. Huge footprints. Nearby they found droppings too, and nests in the undergrowth. And from one of the footprints, they made a cast. Now the cast of the footprint is in this box, on its way to be analyzed by a scientist, expert in reconstructing identity from foot and fingerprints. The Criminal Investigation Department of Wuhan Public Security Bureau. Forensic scientist Zhong Daoli usually works with the police to establish evidence of identity in criminal cases. He examines the cast methodically. Like Dr. Poirier, he began as a skeptic. But detailed observation leads him to a surprising conclusion. At first, I thought the footprints were fake. But if they had been made from a mold, the toes would be evenly spaced. In this case, the toes are oddly spaced. A stone has been trapped between them, and the two of the toes are pressed together. These are my reasons for believing the footprints are real. On the left, a human print. On the right, a bear's paw. So the size of this cast is spectacular, 19 inches long and deeply impressed into the surrounding mud. From his measurements, Zhang can now make an estimate of the size and weight of the creature that made it. My calculations show that the animal would be about 11 feet tall. Because of the spread of the toes, I judge it to be young or middle-aged. According to measurements made on the expedition, its food pressed into the ground by as much as three inches. This suggests a heavy animal. The footprints were between 19 and 20 inches long. They varied because of how the animal's feet were sliding. They found 31 footprints, and the stride was between 5 and a half and 6 and a half feet long. A heavy young animal, perhaps 11 feet tall, moving on two legs as its feet sink into the muddy undergrowth, according to one scientific opinion. Or a shy, elusive creature, as the mountain people believe, a creature which hides high up among the trees, 
far from the human intruders who would pursue it. Like these two local men, curious to know the truth about the Chinese wild men, who celebrate with their families on the eve of their latest expedition. Li Guohua has only recently come back, after wandering alone for 15 years, camping out high in the mountains, always hoping to see the Yeron again. I was halfway up the mountain at Zhou Gongping, resting. It was midday, the sun was shining. Suddenly, a tall Yeren with red hair came down from the mountain top, walking like this. I pointed my rifle and aimed at its rear, but the rifle had got wet in the snow and would not fire. The Yeren has also been seen by Li's colleague, forestry worker Yuan Yu Hao, who is packing to accompany him on a new expedition into the mountains. Three of us saw the Yeren. It was very tall, at least a head taller than me. It had long hair that flowed behind it as it walked. Its whole body was brownish red in color. As local men born and brought up in the mountains, Li and Yuan will be relying on their special knowledge and experience as they venture into the wild terrain far above the villages where human beings live. Chinese government expeditions have made seven unsuccessful attempts to find the Yeren since the 1970s. Are the answers hidden high among these dizzying slopes? The two explorers know of a network of caves above. Caves where they believe the wild man of China can be found. In the remote village of Mu Yuping, the Yeren is no stranger. The school children are asked if they recognize his likeness. Yeren, they chorus. It translates literally as wild man. Everyone who lives in the mountains knows about the strange red-haired hominid. On top of the mountain in winter after the snow, there were big footprints. The stride was pretty big too. It has very long hair and it stoops as it walks in the snow like this. Sometimes, when we had an expedition in the winter, we tracked it a long way. Sometimes, for several miles, it climbed a high cliff. We couldn't follow it. It climbed very fast. Until it's found, it will remain a mystery. On the last government expedition in 1996, Scientists verified 200 new species of plants in this virgin forest. The ecology is, is such, the area is so remote, that it seems to me anything is possible. Uh, anything could hide in those forests and not be seen for tens, hundreds, or thousands of years. In 1556, mandarins reported to the emperor about a beehive of caves, occupied by man-like animals, covered all over with hairs. The Yeren hunters of today set off up the mountain without any desire to hurt their quarry. The nature reserve where they're going to search is home to fewer than a thousand people, yet there have been more than a hundred sightings in 70 years. Of a creature the mountain people believe has lived there as long as humans have. number of possibilities. Yeren is myth, or Yeren is reality. If Yeren is reality, Yeren can be an unknown, very large, bipedal ape. Or it can be a very large, known bipedal ape. Or it can be a very large, unknown, possibly form related to human ancestry. A form that may trace its ancestry back to a fossil known as Giganopithecus found in Asia. All that is known about the prehistoric giant ape 
comes from rare fossil fragments found in caves in central China. Caves in the same region where people report sightings of a large, hairy, wild man. All over the world, from the Bigfoot of North America to the Yeti of the Himalayas, wild places throw up wild man stories. But only China has a wild man backed up by evidence from the fossil record. If Li and UN can find the evidence, if science can verify the existence of a large unknown primate in these forests, it could impact on our understanding of human evolution. 6,000 miles away, in London, the Natural History Museum, repository of human knowledge about the evolution of our own species and about our relatives from the primate world. Dr. Peter Andrews is a primate paleontologist. Trichandopithecus was a huge fossil ape, in fact, the largest of any of the apes that ever lived. Gigantic in stature, gigantic in size. Well, this is a large male orangutan skull, and in the middle is a human skull, uh, a modern human, again from a male. And this is the Gigantopithecus lower jaw. Estimates of body weight based on the size of the jaw and the size of the teeth uh, range up to about 600 pounds. He lived about half a million years ago, uh, but could have lived uh, more recently. I wouldn't be completely surprised if um, Gigantopithecus was, uh, had survived until very recently, and people almost within living memory might have seen the occasional Gigantopithecus in a forest somewhere. Li and Yuan are climbing through mountains pushed up by geological cataclysm a million years ago. But Gigantopithecus is even older. The giant ape is thought to have lived for eight million years, making it the longest surviving primate genus ever to live on Earth. Did it really die out half a million years ago? Or have its descendants survived? Can the quiet forests of Shunung Cha still offer a safe haven to this ancient primate? Is this the real Chinese wild man? The only physical evidence that the giant Asian ape ever existed comes in the form of fossil fragments found in caves. The fossils are very rare, so Li and Yuan are always on the lookout. For all that we have of Gigantopithecus are four partial jawbones and more than a thousand teeth. The first fossil tooth was found in a pharmacy in Hong Kong in the 1930s by a German archaeologist. Peasants collected what they saw as dragon bones with magical properties to grind up for use in traditional Chinese medicine. Gigantopithecus fossils are sometimes found alongside fossils of our ancestor Homo erectus. So scientists know the two species lived at the same time. We know nothing of how they coexisted. Today, Li and Yuan inspect the human skulls and decide they're not fossils. They think they're the victims of a massacre during the bloody Boxer Rebellion of 1900. From the small amount of evidence available, anthropologist Frank Poirier can deduce some facts. Gigantopithecus was a large bipedal animal, perhaps an ape that lived in Asia, who stood anywhere from six, eight, ten feet tall. Eyewitness accounts of Ye Ren say it was an animal that was at least that tall, weighed at least that much, walked on its hind feet bi bipedally, had long red hair. Of course, we don't have any hair from the fossil record. Some even have suggested that Gigantopithecus is an extinct, large uh, human ancestor. That's quite fascinating because if Ye Ren is related to Gigantopithecus, as some suggest, then we have another interesting unanswered chapter in human evolution. Gigantopithecus may have weighed three times as much as the orangutan, its closest relative. The orang is an endangered species now restricted to the Indonesian rainforest. These two Asian apes form one group within the higher primates, 
human beings belong to the other group with the gorillas and the chimpanzees. There's no missing link here. That's an idea abandoned by science. Instead, the great apes share a common ancestor. Since then, in the African line, come chimps, gorillas, and humans. In the Asian line, orangs, gigantopithecus, and maybe the Chinese wild man. The very first primate of all, mother of every ape and monkey species, appeared 65 million years ago, after the doom of the dinosaurs. Countless species have arisen and died out since then. So could a lost human cousin await discovery here? One Chinese zoologist is convinced that it could. For why should the Yeren have died out when its famous contemporary, the giant panda, survived? Hu Zhang Lin is director of the Wildlife Research Institute here. During the initial stages of the fourth glacial period, the giant ape lived all over this country. During that period, both the ape and the panda were very common here. The panda survived, so it's possible that a giant ape could still exist in the Shenongjia region. Giant pandas have survived for seven million years in the bamboo groves of China. They shared this habitat and food store with Gigantopithecus, which may account for the huge jawbones of the fossil record, jawbones necessary for the mastication of this hard and woody forage. But though pandas are rare, they do cling on to life. Did some of the great apes find a way to adapt? For if there is no Yeren surviving today, how to explain the evidence of footprints and sightings and of hairs that cannot be identified by science? These unusual hairs were collected on a research trip by zoologist Hu Zhanglin. In 1980, I joined a government expedition to search for the animal. We received information from local people about a strange animal that had scratched itself on a tree. Several team members went to the site. They found some hair on the tree five feet up. They also found some two feet up. This is some of that hair. We cut it into short sections, and I only have three left now. Now the three precious hairs are on their way from the mountains to the city. These hairs are going to be examined at Tungji Medical University in Wuhan by the man who wrote the first scientific paper on Yerun hair in 1984. Yang Tao is head of the forensic biology department. Yerun research is shared by scientists of different disciplines in China. In Shanghai, physicists used a nuclear accelerator to bombard hairs with high-speed protons. They found a chemical anomaly, an iron to zinc ratio 54 times that of normal human hair. Here in Wuhan, Dr. Yang Tao's biological analysis is conducted through a microscope. He's interested in the morphology or structure of the hairs. Actually, a lot of scientific work's been done on the hairs in the U.S., in Britain, in China by a number of different scientists, physicists, forensic people. Uh, and what they've shown is that some of the hairs are, are hoaxed. Some of what's considered to be hair is not hair. Some of the hair belongs to known monkeys or apes or humans. But the most exciting thing about it is that some of the hair uh, which is related to those other primates, that is monkeys, apes, or humans, cannot be identified with any known monkeys, apes, or humans at this point in time. Dr. Yang Tao makes a careful comparison of the unidentified hair with hair from other primates, orangutans, gorillas, chimps, and humans. <laughs> We examined the Yeren hair found in Shenongjia and discovered that in many ways it is very similar 
to the hair of modern human beings. It is not like the hair of an advanced primate, and it differs from the hair of animals that are common in Shenongjiang region. So it is close to the hair of modern human being, but as to what kind of creature it is, that's still a mystery. A mystery, very close to human, but definitely not human. Ever deeper into the mountains, the Yeren hunters pursue not a wild man, but a lost and gentle cousin. The Yeren is docile unless you hurt it. Physically, it looks very human. So when it meets a human being, it will stop and stare for a moment. And sometimes it makes a laughing sound. Most people who have encountered Yeren have found it to be peaceful. If Yeren is found, it will help in studying human evolution. That's why we search. If Yeren were Gigantopithecus, it would be absolutely fantastic. Because we think that Gigantopithecus has been extinct for 500,000 years. It would be like finding a long-lost relative, uh, perhaps a cousin, perhaps a, a sibling, one that you had never seen, and now all of a sudden you are coming face to face with a creature that you have to somehow integrate into your own family. Sea otters are released back into the wild. See and hear their amazing story online at discovery.com. Friday, it's the only new show dedicated to our world's latest science and technology. Explore the science behind the headlines on Discovery News.